Hey everybody! What's up, everybody? Jason and Andy. That's right. That you got that right that time. I'm really <laughs> proud of you. We are two cats on the couch, and this week we are reviewing Astonishing Tales of Terror: Colon Rocktopussy. Well, because it's not a series, I don't understand. Okay. And it wasn't a terrifying movie. Right. It was astonishing, <laughs> though. So we uh, just randomly picked this movie we to watch. Randomly picked it, and literally with the cover and the name, I was expecting something. We went in with really bad. Low expectations. Low expectations. <laughs> yeah. that I did not have to pay attention to it. I could play it like on my phone or something. And then literally, like I don't know, two or three minutes in, I'm like, uh. The this acting's good. not bad. <laughs> uh, it starts off in 1950s where these three coal miners are going through a, uh, a, a mine trying to find something. Like they heard something down there. So Maggie. they're on a trek to find something and they accidentally unearth an ancient octopus. I mean, e? it, it's got tentacles. So like we're guessing it's an octopus. And so, then it flashes forward. And then it flashes forward in time. Present day. Where we have a news, news reporter, reporter who is doing an investigative journalism and going undercover as a stripper to uh, get the mayor to get get, get get the mayor on blackmail. And it's, it's it was really good. Like it started off in this big strip club scene, and Andy and I just started rolling our eyes, and we're Ugh. like, we're done. We're dumb. This is, I mean, this is dumb. We have no interest in this. And then it like it took a turn. It took a really good turn, <laughs> and uh, it's like the acting was really good, the lighting was really good, the editing was really good. There was appropriate music. Yep, there was a script with dialogue there that was made a sense. Script, uh, considering the kind of good garbage scenes, we've been watching. Good sets and locations yeah. and stuff. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my mic real quick because I want to talk talk to you, goddammit. it. Um, but yeah, ha about 15 minutes in, we were like. Oh, this is not the kind of bad movie we thought it was, and we actually watched the whole thing and really enjoyed it. And really enjoyed it. And it's and Canadian. Yeah. We learned that about halfway through when the, when the flag. warrior goddess gets up in front of the Canadian <laughs> okay. flag you're that ripples in the wind. You're jumping ahead. So we don't need to tell them the whole plot. I know. Just we that need it was to tell good. them enough that that the uh, news reporter right, is so trying to get on this new job. Not a new job, but like a, win an a award. new story. Yeah. And they're all going underground for like this new type of coal mining drill, like a sonic drill. And unfortunately, the sonic drill reawakens the ancient octopus and our hero who survives from the 1950s is trying to tell them not to. And then, Don't do this, it's dangerous. And, they did it anyway. And the, 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 the rocktopusy which, Hi, which they, they never call it. They never call it the Rocktopusy, and I'm kind of no, glad No, they don't for call that. it anything, really. Um, but it reawakens, and it sends out these little, like, rock cockroach bugs, and it takes people over as, like, symbiotes. Symbiotes? Symbiote. Any, anyway. Symbiote. Um, symbiote. And then it becomes kind of like a zombie-esque Cthulhu story. And, yeah. oh, With my God. It just keeps some... jumping the shark in the best way way when, yep. it, when it does jump the shark we kind of look at each other we're like okay this is getting way too weird oh no i'm on board for this it this makes is, sense it's it's taking it seriously enough they and really had no plot holes I, we kept looking every for time we were except, like well, what about and then they explained it and, and we're like what yeah. about and then they explained it and we we're like wow these well guys how are... can you read these hieroglyphs oh, okay you're explaining exactly how this is happening yeah um it was and then the super the, fun. The, the lead the lead guy and the lead girl were adorable and they're and, in a shitload of movies together. And they're in a shitload of movies together. So Andy and I are on this like pilgrimage now to like watch everything they're in, yeah. including uh, Home for the Harvest, which is polar opposite of the kind of movies oh, I like. Oh, this bitch did a lot of Christmas flicks, guys. Lot, and, and the director, the director has done a lot of Christmas. I'm super Just excited in the about last that. four years, yeah, a lot of Christmas movies in the last four years. You get them all done. That's right. Every year, you got to pump them out. So on that note, Andy's going to be doing something very special. Do you want to talk about what you're going to be doing? Hopefully, like a 25 days of Christmas. That's it. That's yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm going to walk you guys through my favorite Christmas stuff. Very short videos explaining the movies that I like, the shows that I like, the snacks that I like, if I can stick to it. 
We're going to try. Got my list half ready. Yeah, half ready? 19. 19. Say yeah. six more. We got we to stress out. Got to figure more. out something else. So that'll be coming December 1st and every day through December up until Christmas. So I've got a lot of editing to do. Or not. You can just make I'll it just really, really easy. Short. I really I'll just be really short. I'll just be perfect that. on camera yeah. like always. Like always. Anyway. Uh, so would you recommend... Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's, what's it called? Astonishing, Astonishing Tales of Terror. Astonishing Tales of Terror. Rock to Pussy. I sure would. I, I would too, and not just for the bad movie crowd, but I know for it's all the crowds. Pretty it's decent. just fun. It's good acting, <laughs> great music, great story, good editing. Uh, the only thing I had fun characters, uh, great characters, yeah. really fun characters. Yeah, they introduced you to all of them. You started liking them. Yeah, or hating them. Uh, even depending. the side characters, even though the yeah. ones that I, I wanted to hate, even her cameraman, were still kind of fun. Yeah, um, like like the 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 villain people were yeah. still kind of fun to like. <laughs> yeah, they were watch, and um, the only. thing problem I had an issue with was some of the CGI fire effects. Yeah, the but, fire got a little touchy. But knowing, uh, first of all, knowing that it's an in indie film, that they don't have a lot of budget for this, that they're doing this because of they the They did it bit. so well. They did it minimally. Yes. And they didn't yes. show the monster and too they much. They knew where their weaknesses much. were and they kind of shied away yes. from those and it, it really worked out well. It worked out to their advantage. Yeah. I would recommend this. Highly recommend I'm excited to see the rest of her movies. Uh, yeah, we're again, we're going on the pilgrimage, the deep dive of all their movies, and we're going to try and find them. The next big dive is they did a series of movies called Dark Rising. Two of them plus a TV show. I think three of them. Well, not well, on two, her IMDb two page. Two TV shows. One, one is 11 episodes. One is five episodes. Oh, that's like one season. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's two official movies, and I heard that the third movie is just a rehashing of the second one with a different cover. Oh. So, we're, so there's two movies and two TV shows, Either and way. we're going to track them down. Dark so. Rising, Summer Veil. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great day. See you guys. Bye.